Good evening and welcome to the Speaker MC Show where it's all about relationships. Today, our topic is about informational foods. Control your behavior through foods. Tonight's show promises to be super exciting and super informational because we're gonna be talking about foods that actually control your behavior as opposed to you controlling the food, the food is controlling you. Hmm. Here's what you can expect. If tonight is your first time being on the Speaker MC Show, well, welcome, and we're glad that you are here. We will have an, a brief overview of the show. Then we'll take a little break, get a word from our sponsors, come back and say hi to our guests, and then we'll have the discussion of our show topic. Then we'll take another little break, and then we come back, and you can actually have some question and answer sessions with our guests. And then we'll say bye-bye from the show. As I said, today is all about foods and the Speaker MC show is talking about informational foods. Now, we are humans, right? And as humans, we're communicators. We like to talk to each other. We like to say hello. We like to dance. We like to play. Everything's relational. Well, so are foods. Foods, they say, eight foods that are good for your face. Well, how do we know that? And why is it good for our face? Is the food telling us that? Hmm. Here at the Speaker MC Show, where it's all about relationships, we talk about how we relate to ourselves, how we relate to each other, and how we relate to our environment. <laughs> it's 60 minutes of free-flowing conversation with me, your host, and two guests. Yes, and you're gonna to get to meet our guests later on in the show. Our intention is trifecta. First, for you, our audience, we want to empower and enlighten you about creating harmonious environments and boosting your self-confidence. And for our guests, we like to provide a platform and an opportunity where they can share their message. And for everyone, the intention is to have some fun. That's right, we're gonna have some fun today. So now we're gonna take a small break and get the word. Now, here's a word from our sponsor. Too much of this. And now a word from our sponsor. Who are you hanging with? Are they killing your dreams? The pessimists, society, friends, the goals, the fears, the guilt? But what's shaping your success? Do you want success in your career? How about in your life? Well, how badly do you want this success? to overcome a challenging past, to develop inner peace, to create a mindset and a lifestyle that serves you. Well, in 12 weeks, you'll dream it, plan it, and create the life that you deserve. Ask for Shana, 12 weekly sessions of individualized coaching to gain success in your life. Yes. Coaching with Rakshana is a 12-week session of customized coaching to help you to become successful 
in your career, your business, and your life. That's right. Get your life now. Contact Rakshana at www.womenslifecoaching.com. That's www.womenslifecoaching.com. There are limited seats for the new session. Remember, it's 12 weekly sessions of customized coaching to help you to become successful in your career, in your business, and in your life. So connect with her, www.womenslifecoaching.com. And now a word from our sponsor. And we are back. So at this juncture, I'd like you to say hello to our guests. I'm going to introduce our guests to you, and then you can just wave for me, guests. <laughs> First and foremost is our guest. This woman is, I met her, it's been about a year now, Rukshana. Yeah, I met Rukshana. Rukshana is in the same speaking bureau as I am. And we started to co-create. And I'm telling you, this woman is so fascinating. Every time I see a picture of her, she's always outdoors. Always outdoors and skiing and running and jogging. The other day, her husband was painting her toenails. That's what she does. <laughs> Rakshana Triem, she's a women's lifestyle coaching. And she's in the Portland, Oregon area. Say hi, Rakshana. Just wave to our guests. Her area of expertise is helping moms and women around the world change their story. She's a former refugee from Mozambique, and she came to the U.S. in the 90s, and she overcame sexual abuse and became an advocate for parents and child care providers to support them on their healing journey. She is now the CEO of her women's lifestyle coaching business, where she helps women overcome their rough past and create their desired beautiful life through nature retreats and different online coaching programs and communities. Rakshana holds a bachelor's in sci of bachelor's of science in human development and worked as an early childhood teacher, trainer, mentor, social worker, and now a lifestyle coach. When she's now spending time with her husband and her girls who are currently in college and volunteering, taking women in the outdoor adventures, she's hiking and she's backpacking. Rakshana, just say hello to our audience, please. Hello, everyone. Great to be here. Thank you so much for, being, uh, for having me here today, Marsha. And thank you so much for being here. <laughs> If you ladies and gentlemen only knew <laughs> what's been going on behind the scenes here, <laughs> well, we're having fun anyway. And our next guest, so the next guest is like my ride or die partner. We co-create, we met, we also met about a year ago, right, Najami? Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, we also met about a year ago. And Najami and I have been co-creating with, a lot of projects and especially our radio show which is called the bushes swelling show this woman is also phenomenal she is in the brooklyn new york area and she's also known as bush woman she is a ceo of bush woman conversations project her area of expertise is <coughs> wow she's been a personal chef for private clients and she's done catering where she created a nutritious, healthy dish that incorporated fresh herbs and spices from various cultures. That much I know she's really good with. She's a personal development awareness life coach, and she has taught cooking classes and catered nutritious dishes to private clients for over 20 years. She's contributed recipes to Queen Afua, Heal Thyself Cookbook, and has conducted Bush Woman Natural Living Tours to health food stores, spice shops, and vegetable markets. 
please say hello, Najami, and welcome to the Speaker MC Show. Well, thank you so much for that warm welcome. Uh, uh, let me just add, I need to send that to you, that I also have my bachelor's in motivational psychology. And I also work in substance abuse, where I, I'm also a KSAC. Uh, that's certification alcohol and substance abuse counseling, where I counsel patients who use illicit substance on a daily or regular basis. Okay, well, thank you for that. <laughs> And in case you're wondering who is that woman in the hat, well, that's me. My name is Speaker MC, Marcia Chambers, and I'm a speaker and a sexual wellness consultant. And my area of expertise is working with women who are lonely in their relationships to go, I help them to go from sexless to steamy. And my message is for women to have better sex and better intimacy so that they can give themselves permission to be sensual and to be sexual and just begin to lead empowered lifestyles. My mission is to reduce the world's divorce rate by 50%. And that's why I created SWELL for women because I saw people just exchanging DNA and not asking the right questions and then subjecting the rest of us to all their dysfunctions. I host and I produce a few shows where my message is about female sexuality and they're the swell happy hour swell playroom and the bushes swelling show with my co-host there miss najami <laughs> najami lazama bushwoman and this show the speaker mc show it's all about relationships and it explores how we relate to ourselves to our environment and to each other so welcome, welcome, welcome. And we are so happy to have our guests here and we're so happy to have you here. Tonight's discussion is about informational foods. Control your behavior through foods. Now, as speakers, and most business people are speakers, in case they didn't know it, but as speakers, you have to know to whom you speak. You have to know your audience. Because in the event that you are speaking to the wrong people and delivering the wrong message, well, you're not going to get much engagement. The same thing with foods. If you're eating the wrong foods that don't agree with your system, your, your hormones or whatever it is, your digestive system, then you're going to get heartburn and indigestion. You're going to get pain, bloating, cramping, all of that. Flatulence especially. I know a lot of guys can relate to that. <laughs> well, our digestive system, it's a system. It's all these organs that speak to each other, and every organ has a specific function. Now, are we killing ourselves because we are not sending the right communications to our organs? Are we not eating the right foods that communicate with our organs to send the right messages? This statistic shows that world diabetes cases are expected to jump 55% by 2035. 55%. And this is global. This is their expe expectation. And this is from the International Diabetes Federation. And how many of these diseases, besides diabetes, are preventable? How many of these chronic diseases, there's type 2 diabetes, there's stroke, there's colon cancer, is it because we're eating the wrong foods? Is it because we're allowing foods to control us as opposed to we control foods? What information is our food sending to our organs? What is GMO? Is that supposed to be something that we really need to consider? And what can we do? These questions we'll try and answer here tonight. No, no, we will try. We'll answer them here tonight. That's what we'll do. <laughs> so our guests, <coughs> we're going to discuss informational foods. Control your behavior through food. So let me stop sharing this screen and let's delve in <sighs> with our guests. Good evening and welcome to the Speaker MC Show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for both being here. And thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> 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 now, I made the comparison 
that as speakers, we need to know to whom we're speaking. We need to know who our audience is. And I wanna make that correlation with food. What is your stance? And I know Bushwoman, you deal a lot with herbs and spices. What is your stance on that? Just a, just a question, do, do our foods need to communicate properly with us? Um, well, first I, I need to say that food is an energy. Food is energy in of itself. And if we don't utilize the energy, the appropriate management of the foods that we ingest, you are going to throw off the elements of the body, which are covered in five elements. And I like, I, I'm very much um, a, a student also of the Chinese five elements, which is um, wood, earth, metal. Um, I hope you're not hearing my paper here because I got notes. So, you know, fire and um, also water. So when we don't, uh, let's say we have certain cravings um, of certain type of foods more regularly and there's an imbalance, it will throw off the function of those particular elements that rule certain organs. So take, for example, wood element mm -hmm. rules the liver. And liver deals with a lot of emotional um, balances or imbalances, which is anger, frustration, things of that nature. Then you have wood element. And that deals with worry and grief. And that wood element um, also rules around um, the stomach, um, the spleen. Then you have metal elements that deals with grief, depression, um, and those things rule the lungs. Then you have water elements that affects the thyroid and hormones. And then you have fire elements that affect the heart, hypertension, cholesterol. So we can achieve optimal health um, by balancing the foods we eat, working with a nutritionist or even a Chinese herbalist who will do um, pulse and tongue diagnosis on you and help you to balance this body system. Hmm. That's interesting that you mentioned the earth, wind, and fire elements and how each, are, each rules certain organs and certain pathways of our emotions. Is that something that you're familiar with as well, Rakshana? No, I'm not familiar with it, but I have read, I have read a little bit about that in the ancient medicine and how to process food and how, what kind of uh, different foods that's healthy for our body. But what I'm really familiar with is, you know, I hear a lot of people complaining like they're tired at the end of the day. And they don't realize that it's because of the food that they're eating. You know, it's what they're putting into their body. Because, um, like, um, is it na Najima? Najima? Najami. <laughs> Najami. <laughs> like Najami said, <laughs> I'm going to have to sing a song so I can remember your name. Najami said, you know, food is energy. You know, if we don't uh, replenish our body with that energy, and of course, at the end of the day, we're going to be tired. You know, we used to be hunters and gatherers. We were able to eat whole foods, you know, whole nutrient foods that do not, we were able to work through the day until the end of the day. And, you know, if we don't eat those nutrient food, of course, we're going to get exhausted at the end of the day. So, uh, well, yes, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with both commentaries. My question now is, so if each organ has mm -hmm. a specific role function mm -hmm. in order to process this energy, because we are energies mm -hmm. and everything about us is energy, right? Yeah. So yeah. Let, let's, not, let's not even look at that spiritual dimension. Let's look at the, the physicality of it. So we take an apple and we're eating the apple and it goes through the digestive tract, right? Now, nowadays, that apple depends on which orchard and does the apple have seeds mm -hmm. and you know, is it, is it, um, fermented by Monsat or is it fermented by, you know, it's, it's like so many different variables that go into this apple. It, it's no longer just an apple, right? Mm -hmm. But let's, let's take it back to the bare basics. Mm -hmm. You eat the food and the food 
is processed through all these organs. Now, which foods are ruled by the wood? Which foods are ruled by the water? Which foods are ruled by the fire? Should we be looking at it from that perspective and say, well, okay, I'm only eating, name me some fire foods that are good for the heart. Najami. Najami. Yes. Oh, okay. Asking a question. I'll tell you just yes. one speaking. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Um, yes, there are specific foods that could, um, that ruled the, let's deal with wood energy, um, or the wood, sh um, the, the wood element. And now the foods that deals with wood and wood also controls the liver and gallbladder. Right. And people can also do their own research. All this information is also on my favorite channel for information is also YouTube and working with an herbalist. Um, foods that nourish the liver are green foods. Green foods, especially foods like spinach, mm -hmm. kale, celery, leeks, um, green peppers, um, green beans, um, chrysanthemums, lettuce, cabbage. Um, so those foods nourish. Now, it's important to have a balance of the different types of foods in your diet. More plant-based, vegetarian-based, the better. I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat your meat. If you like your meat once in a while, I'm fine. But make sure you have more of uh, vegetables and things. So more green vegetables um, in your diet helps to balance the liver. Now, the, the balance of the liver requires much more because liver and kidney are two major organs. And when they are off balance, it really throws a lot of things off. So having, you have to also watch your emotional state. Are you a person who gets angry all the time? gets pissed all the time. Uh, I put my hands up. I sometimes get like that, right? And therefore, those emotions throw off the energetic balance of the liver, of the wood issue. Mm -hmm. So therefore, now, we have to eat the foods that complement it or, or balance of those foods that complement that. So that's it for the wood, liver energy, liver so, balance. So, so I always heard when these nutritionists create these food plans. They always say, look at the colors. Your food is supposed to be, your plate is supposed to be very colorful. So yeah. it seems as if the air, water, wood, fire theory is also aligned with the coloring because you're saying wood foods are green. So should I then interpret that the fire foods are red? Yes. Oh, ding, 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 ding. You win. <laughs> of course. But red. Let's look, at, look, let's look at Valentine's Day. What is the color for Valentine's Day? You're dealing with the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with red, red lipsticks. Women who read red have many different uh, connotations of red. Either you are sexy, you're voluptuous, you're passionate. And some women have an issue with red lips. They mean that they are whorish or whatever. But red is passion. Red is fire. Red is heat. So red people, people who have issues like high cholesterol, high blood pressure, have an imbalance in the fire chakra, the fire element part of their body. So you have to eat a lot of food that incorporates red things um, some of the things will be ginger, cayenne pepper, anything that's hot. Um, also, um, dealing with, um, well, I always recommend water. Water is a very important element that we need to incorporate in our lives. I hope you're not hearing my paper rolling here. Um, <laughs> but um, I must say that um, people who are fire energy, a fire element, are extremely passionate. Um, yes, yeah, sometimes they can get very, very upset very quickly. Um, but wait a minute. I, I, I don't mean to, to, to cut you off, but what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at now, so the coloration of the plate, right? Yeah. <clears throat> because many people have never heard of the elements being the focus point of the food, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't even see food as energy. They don't... They, they're totally divorced from that spiritual plane. So right. let, let's look at it from a common state that the colors, I want to go back to these colors because I think that's something that people would most be able to relate right. to. So the wood kind of threw me off the fact that, you know, 
their color, the color is green. I right. thought it would be brown, you know, but well. Anything more white and brown. No, yeah, right? Yeah, uh -huh. so, so the metal, the metal, the fire we got is red and that's with the, the blood pressure and the high cholesterol, right? Right. The water, what would that be? We don't have clear food. I know water that's, elements that's are, well, water elements rules the kidneys and the adrenal. Mm -hmm. oh, and and again, the okay. Well, it affects the thyroid because they're all connected. When there's an imbalance, any one of the organs that rules the elements of the body, it will throw something off. Huh. So the kidneys and adrenals are definitely connected to the adrenals, um, adrenals and thyroid. So you have hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism. So what color is um, that? people, are, that color is white actually, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, but, they say, but wait a minute. So they say to stay away from white foods. So yes. No, it depends on the white foods. It depends on the white. No, sorry, the color is not white. The color is black. White, white rules water. Kidney and adrenals are water element energy. Right. That's when you have an imbalance, you tend to go to the bathroom much more regularly. Sometimes you can't hold your urine or you get up in your sleep. Especially men who suffer with a lot of posture problems, even when men who suffer with continence, sometimes you get up a lot to go to the bathroom or you feel this urge to go to the bathroom. When you go to the bathroom, there's a little trickle, a little thing, but you have this urge to pee. So there's an imbalance in the water element within the body and the foods that complement that, believe it or not, are dark color food. Um, black foods like black beans, um, black rice, black sesame seeds, um, things that deals with seaweed, kelp, those things nourish that part of the body. Mm -hmm. um, so we do, when we eat, you should have a colorful plate. You should have beets, you should have kale, spinach, mixed greens, mm -hmm. um, lentil beans or black beans. You need to have a combination of different things to help balance those elements within the body and again, I always recommend um, really seeking out a nutritionist or somebody who's in the Chinese herbology to help you with that too. So I'm glad that you went through the, the color ration. Well, I, um, well, I haven't gone through all of them because the white no, foods. I know. Long. Yeah. I know. Um, the white foods, I'm, I'm kind of particular with that because I always tell people, you know, stay away from white refined flour, white refined sugar, and mm -hmm. that's white food to me, mm -hmm. you know, because it's it's been stripped of its natural potency mm -hmm. and it's been refined. And I, let me get to the GMO, and I want to touch on the GMO only because we're in this element now where we're talking about all these foods that are the different colors that are supposed to be good for you. But like I said before, there's so many variables about, um, is it organic? Is it this? Is it that? You know, where'd you get it from? That, that, that kind of stuff. So GMO, Rukshana, you know anything about the GMOs and the GMO yes. concept? Yes, it's a gen genetically modified food. You know, <laughs> it is what's processed, like a lot of breads that we eat, you know, a lot of families that you know, who I work with, they don't realize that white bread is, you know, refined, it's processed, you need to eat whole wheats. And what is the other one? A lot of rice nowadays is also modified, it's processed. Um, sugar, like you're saying, it's processed, you know, it's not brown sugar, it's, you know, it's processed through that. Yes, so, you know, the more we eat some of those things, they also are hurting our health, they're hurting our heart, they're hurting everything about our bodies. There, there was a study that said that the soy, and I, I know that they try to promote soy as the new health, yes. healthy way to go. Mm -hmm. And 91% of the soy is produced in a lab as opposed to grown in the farm. So how much of this, you know, oh, it's GMO, it's non-GMO. Can we mm -hmm. really believe that? You know, unless mm -hmm. we're going to go out in the backyard and grow our own stuff. Because yeah. they have so many seedless this and seedless that. I was taught that everything emanates from the seeds. Mm -hmm. So grapes need to have seeds. Melons need to have seeds. Chicken need to have wings. I've never yeah. heard of no wingless chicken. You know, <laughs> boneless, boneless wings. Because they're, they're making up all this stuff. And it's, they're making it sound like, you know, oh, it's so 
poof la. No, mm-hmm. it's not. It's yeah. killing you. It, it's really yeah. killing you. Yeah. And, and what's happening? What, what's what's happening is our, also our bodies, our stomach are working extra harder to digest the products like soy because it was made in the lab, you know, and our stomachs, because our stomach was not made for that. Our stomach was able to digest whole foods, but right. now we're creating, our stomachs are working extra harder by creating, creating more stress to intestines to just to process the this, this, this stuff that's not good for us with soy. And I was reading about soy about a month ago. I, I was drinking soy milk because I thought it was healthier, but then I realized that my body is actually taking longer to digest the soy because the way it's done into the lab. So it's really about educating yourself what you're eating, what you're putting into your body. And all these women that are popping up with all these fibroids and they're tasting, oh, oh, God. Where that comes from. You know, <laughs> yes, fibro. And then they want to give you a hysterectomy because they're like, oh, we don't know where it comes from, you know, and it's, it's populating your womb and all this nonsense. So I, I, mm. I veer to the GMO because there's more of a political sprinkling that's involved there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, how many of you have heard of the Bilderberg group? I haven't. Mm-hmm. You haven't heard of the Bilderberg. Mm-hmm. So the Bilderberg group is just this group, this community of the wealthiest of the wealthiest. I mean, like the 0.1%, the kings and the princes and the filthy rich people. And the UN has a department that has like a census bureau. And they were saying that by 2020, is it 2035 or 2035? Yeah. The population, the global population will be only 8 billion people. We're currently at 7.3 billion in 2018. So they're saying that by 2035, the population will only be 8 billion. So what does that mean to you? Does it mean that they're they're creating these foods in the lab under the pretense that, oh, well, you know, so many people and mass production because the hogs and the pigs and the the cows and the cattle can't keep up with the production. So we have to produce it in the, in the, (laughs) and then we have to feed it to you. And, and diabetes, (coughs) heart disease, Mm -hmm. high cholesterol. We have a a friend here, Dr. Dr. Yi Wong. Hello. You're, you're on mute. Dr. Yi Wong, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. No, (laughs) you're on mute. (coughs) Okay, well, we'll put you back on mute then. But Dr. (laughs) Yi Wong (laughs) is is a proficient, astute doctor in oriental medicine. Mm-hmm. And I wanted her to just touch in on, on what we were saying here about, you know, people and their organs and they're eating all these foods that are mass produced in the labs and the GMO and the non-GMO foods. How do we even know that they are non-GMO, Rakshana? I mean, the label will say it, but from what I heard, you can buy anything in this America. Yes, it's really hard to tell nowadays. Yes, I mean, I buy at an organic store and sometimes I question that myself. How do we know it's non-GMO? But I trust that, you know, the country, the community is, you know, is populating this stuff into the store that I'm spending extra money that I'm taking care of my body and my health because I'm protecting my health for many more. It's hard. It's really, really hard. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and to that point, the other day I went to the fish market and I love salmon. Ooh, and the salmon that I usually buy, the salmon is pale. You know, it's a pale pink salmon. Mm-hmm. Here I am eating the salmon all this time thinking that, oh, it's healthy for me. Come to find out, here he comes with a, a new, new kind of salmon. Oh, this is, this is the, the one you've been eating was farm raised. This one is from Alaska. Like really, I, I mean, you see the difference in the coloring. Mm-hmm. The coloration mm-hmm. is like so vast. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, well, why were you giving me the other one before? Well, it was cheaper. And then you hear about these farm raised mm-hmm. fish, how they inoculate them with all this medicine and then mm-hmm. all that medicine, you know, what is that doing to the communication that the food is having with us? Najami. Yes. yes. 
Good job. Wow, that, that means you said you said you said a mouthful. Can you hear me? Yes. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. You said a mouthful. Um, the GMO situation is a worldwide epidemic. It's a crisis where what they're doing is to eliminate the population, to reduce the population, and therefore it's a big payback. It's all politics. It's all money. You, I put stuff in the food. You get sick. The doctors get a kickback, the pharmaceuticals get a kickback, and you have a perpetuation of diseases. Mm -hmm. People no longer want to cook their food, uh, or, well, people, some people, it depends where you live, you know, even if you're farming and you're growing your food, where are you getting your seeds from, from, G, from, from, from Monsanto, those people. Um, so you can't win for losing. I mean, I bought a garlic a couple, few months ago, and within a week, the garlic started to spoil. I said, what the hell is this? I'd never see garlic. I'm not garlic. I'm sorry, ginger. I never saw oh. ginger spoil so quickly. <laughs> so as much as you try, I mean, I buy aloe vera. I eat aloe vera really religiously every day. And aloe vera is a green food. It works on detoxifying the liver. And the aloe that I eat here in America when I eat aloe in the Caribbean, it's a vast different taste. You can smell the aloe when you cut it. Like it the smell of it goes into your body. The aloe here is bitter. Now, it's not that bitter to me because I'm accustomed with it from the organic source. But those who don't are not accustomed, they'll find it bitter so you can buy the drink and drink it. But and you have to implement certain type of foods on a regular basis in your diet. And when people say diet, they think they'll do something for a certain period of time and then they stop any basis. Mm -hmm. Alkaline water, alkaline, alkaline the pH in your body. So you have to make an effort to start drinking things like that. And there are some good ones on the market. I'm not trying to promote Trader Joe's, but Trader Joe's does have the alkaline water. It's pretty good. Essential alkaline water is pretty good. Um, there are tests um, that shows you alkaline water. Somebody who has a machine, aloe vera alkalines the body because if you have too much acid in the body based on eating too much sweets, too much fried foods, too much meat, creates acid in the body. Therefore, you create a festing ground for this ease. Rheumatism, too much sweets, um, rheumatism, arthritis, things of that nature, too much um, salt, hypertension, high blood pressure, too much fat, unhealthy fats, I should say, high cholesterol. So you have to make a considered effort to balance your food types. This is a temple, the temporary shell. We're going to die at some point in time. We can't get away from it. I don't know anyone who came back from death coming back to say what it was or close to it maybe. But I'm saying that you, it's important for you. I'm not saying that you cannot have cravings. Women who have a lot of yeast infections have cravings for starch, starchy right. food, cakes, sweets, a lot of bread, cheese. And you'll find that you have a lot of yeast infections from consuming a lot of those foods. At one time, I used to have those infections a lot. I craved bread. I craved cheese a lot. It was ridiculous until I had learned, I had connected to a nutritionist who, and I think we had him on one of our shows, Dr. Gucciato who helped me to balance my body quite tremendously. More beans. When you eat more peas and beans, you don't feel that hungry. It keeps mm -hmm. you saturated. It keeps you full. So black beans, chickpeas. Black beans help with kidneys. Chickpeas, I believe it's a white, uh, a yellow, so these with earth elements. You need to incorporate foods that help you. Mm -hmm. I, um, your food is your medicine. I believe that you really need to learn how to make food healthy. Healthy food is simple. It doesn't have to be that difficult. Mm -hmm. Half an hour, you can make a healthy, nutritious meal. Steam some pumpkin, sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes, American yams, help with your pancreas, all right, lose that organ. Beets, a lot of people don't like beets, but I, I eat a lot of beets. beets. <laughs> beets <are hard. laughs> There's so much different ways it builds the blood. People who are anemic, um, tamarind. You can put tamarind, actual tamarind, in your seafood or your meat or your vegetables. 
Um, so you have to have a combination of certain elements. Hot, bitter, sweet, sour. Um, let me say another element, I think so. Things in your body. Cucumber, celery. You have to combine stuff. Exercise, working out. Um, all those elements work. You can't just, you know, and if you don't balance it properly, you can burn out either the kidney or um, the spleen, stomach element, fire can get burnt out. That's why working with a Chinese herbologist, and I love Dr. Ye Wong is, is trying to get on, she can really shed some light on that. Yes. Sister? I love, I love, I'm going to bounce off what you're just saying, Najami, is is people don't realize that food is medicine, you know, and people say that it's, it takes so much work, it takes so, so much time, but this is your body. You're giving it energy. Of course, you're going to make time to give it nutrient food. Your body's here to stay for such a long time, nourishes with good stuff, just the way we take care of our minds and our thoughts or our job. You treat your body the same way by feeding it good stuff. I just had someone tell me the other day, well, cooking takes a long time. I mean, aren't you worthy of a healthy meal? Even though it's just to steam up some spinach, just some hot water, just it, it's really your body is really not worthy to eat that healthy, nutritious food, you know, and just kind of comparing what the habits, what they're doing and, you know, giving them those options. And, and, you know, I love what you both said about the foods and the combinations and all that. And I love what Najami touched on about the hot, bitter, sweet, sour, and that Trader Joe's sells them. Now we're back to that. How do we know that, you know, this is really, but, but, but notwithstanding, notwithstanding, we're not going to, what do you call it? Pick hairs. <laughs> I, I always, um, one thing I know that works for me, you know, some people who may not be buying organic food, there, there could be a way that you can also detox your liver on a daily basis certain certain foods that you eat like the beets and apple you juice that it detoxes your liver or even just two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar that helps to detox your liver so whatever the toxins are and i know that part of the reason why a lot of people have these diseases is because like you touched on ajami it, it festers you know all the food goes in and it festers and it has no way of escaping so to speak and it mm -hmm. ferments and then that fermentation causes the cell blocks you know it blocks up and then it causes um what they call them uh cysts and mm -hmm. you know all these growths all over the yeah. body and and yeah. it's because of it's because of that lack of detoxing i think if more people mm -hmm. incorporated some kind of detoxification of their temple maybe every quarter or maybe every six months, then I mm -hmm. think that they would, they would cut down on a lot of the dis-ease, mm -hmm. rheumatoid arthritis, young people walking around with walking sticks. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's hard me. Oh my God. I mean, Isn't that amazing? Yes. Walking sticks. I never sticks. seen that. Yes. And we're not talking that, you know, oh, well, they got a gunshot or something. We're talking about people no. who have these ailments. Yes. What's wrong with you? Oh, I have rheumatoid food. arthritis. Really? Food killing the ass. I'm sorry. Food <laughs> killing the ass. It's seriously, it's like amazing. And I'm also a massage therapist. So, I mean, it's like amazing. Let me let's say something, too. Not only are the foods that will kill your body, but your stinking thinking. If you don't work on your personal development, meaning your emotional state, it affects the body. Mm -hmm. Liver deals with anger. Kidney deals with fear. Grief deals with lung. Worry and stuff deals with spleen and, spleen and stomach. You have to work on your emotional state. If you, everything is all intertwined. So it's not just the food that you eat, because if you have an unbalanced, unhealthy emotional state, you crave certain food. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you got to work on letting stuff go, letting people go. Mm -hmm. All of those things <laughs> combine to your cravings. Let me tell you something. It's one life to live. Well, I don't know. I believe in many lifetimes. But in this lifetime, mm -hmm. people who don't honor you, support you, serve you, if you don't honor yourself, so, and therefore, deals with 
your awareness of your standards, your values, and your needs. So yeah. I'm also Bushwood, yes, I'm Bushwood, I'm also a personal development life coach. I'm not saying that I don't have stuff that I'm not still working on, but compared to how I was 10, five years ago to where I am now, I understand that the importance of being aware of how you think affects the cravings, and the cravings, therefore, leads to certain diseases in the body. Mm-hmm. And it is your responsibility for your own health. Mm-hmm. Follow your gut. Follow your inner bushwoman, your own bushman. If you get sick or when you get sick, your spirit, your body will tell you what to mix, what to drink, what to stay away from, but you've got to listen. Mm-hmm. And you know, another thing I just wanted to touch on what you said. So I deal with a lot of women who are in these sexless unions and they don't seem to realize that they are probably causing a lot of it in the, in the sense that they're eating so much damn sugar and it's, it's causing their libido to just go down, 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 down. Mm-hmm. And they don't even realize how much sugar they're eating. Mm-hmm. They, they get the mokolata chikonaka luka from Starbucks. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, it's like this much coffee and this much whipped oh, cream and, yeah, and sugar and all this yes, kind of stuff. Yes, and then yes. they go and they get the, um, the French fries. And notwithstanding that the French fries is fried food, then they squirt all this ketchup all mm-hmm. over it. You know, I mean, how much sugar are you consuming in one day, just seamlessly, mindlessly? Instead of picking up a, an apple or, or eating pineapples, which would clean their third eye, they, they, they'd mm-hmm. rather, oh, let me go eat some fried foods, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they're not realizing how much sugar mm-hmm. they're ingesting and how that sugar is being a detriment. I think mm-hmm. sugar, they say, is one of the biggest causes of cancer. Yes. And arthritis, inflammation and in our, joints. Inflammation. And, and inflammation, cancer. Period. And cancer. And lots right. of cancer. Yeah. yeah. I love I love what Najami was saying about, you know, it's all about the whole body. It's the about mm-hmm. mind, body, and soul. And you know, my journey, I used to be two hundred and ten pounds and I remember no. Yes, I remember going through this phase. I was craving those things. So I had to make a little, deliberate addition, decision that I wasn't going to bring those things in the house. I wow. could not buy those things in the house. I couldn't buy ice cream. I couldn't buy, wow. I was just going to buy apples. So when you are left with the choice that you only have apples on the table, then you are hungry. You eat that apple. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. You're so tired. You don't want to go to the store and go get ice cream because it's it's a 10 o'clock at night. You cut up that apple. Right. You eat that and apple. Eat that. that apple tastes so good. Yes. <laughs> I bought two bags of apples last week. I took two ba- apples with me when on my way to my appointment to the doctor today. Apples are excellent for stomach problems. If you have digestive issues, you have diarrhea problems, you eat something bad, eat an apple. The pectin in the apple helps to soothe the intestinal tract. Yeah. Apples, listen, I, I, I mean, I bought I some. I love apples. They, yeah. apples. What they say, apple a day keeps the doctor away. Hello, yeah. it's you, Dr. true. <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes. It's not the just the apple; it's the nuts. It's those, those dried things that yes. you can just put, put in a Ziploc baggie and put throw them in your in your bag in your purse. So that way, when you're hungry, you have those fruits and whatever and nuts in your bag, and you can just make instant decision because we make instant decision based how you're feeling at that moment. You are mm-hmm. hungry instead of going drive through. I'm like, oh, I have an apple. I can just drive while I'm eating that apple. Oh, I have some nuts. I can just drive while I'm eating that nuts. Then you're making those. Because they're saying, I'm hungry. I don't have anything. Responsibility. To eat. Have some, just throw those in your bag and you'll have them available. Yes. Right. Because when we are hungry, that's when we make those instant decisions that affects our yes. decisions for food. And then later yeah. on, we feel like crap because we ate those food. Oh, why did I eat that? Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. So just, yeah. just throw an apple in your bag and your car and some nuts and zip, put them in a little Ziploc baggies and just carry them around. So that way, when you're hungry, just eat them right away. Can I, piggyback, can I piggyback on what you just said? It requires a responsibility yes. for you to prevent certain diseases. I'm not saying that you're not going to come down with something or whatever, but for you to eat no, healthy not. and be healthy is a responsibility in doing what is right. Mm-hmm. I travel with nuts. Pumpkin seeds gives people with mm-hmm. anema energy, helps men with their posture. Brazil nuts, walnuts feeds your brain and it keeps you full. You eat about five or seven walnuts in the morning. You don't have too much craving. 
you have to be responsible for your body. Mm -hmm. I am not saying like right now I'm talking, yes, I'm having some, some, <laughs> time, right? But I mean, do I have it every day? No. <laughs> if I want to have it every day, I do, but I sure do not want to take a cleanse. But I'm just saying that to say that you got to take responsibility for your health. I, 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 your food is, hello, you understand, look for that, right? It is your responsibility that nobody else is do the research, do the work, mm -hmm. and the discipline. Yes. Eating healthy doesn't have to be boring. It's a fun thing. You can eat so much fun food in a healthy way. Oh, my God, my shit is fun. I don't know about anybody else. I, I, just think, want I, some... think, that's, I think that's part of the problem. People don't want yeah. to get into that discipline, that regiment, you know? Mm -hmm. Dr. Yewong, we can't hear you. Is she on mute? I don't know what she's on. <laughs> I've unmuted her and she's not, I don't know. Unmute audio, it's unmuted. She's talking, but we're not hearing you. Oh, we see you moving. I know. <laughs> I'll check her thing. Oh wow. Yeah, check your check. Maybe your volume is down or something. But I just wanted to make sure that we, until Dr. Yuang figures out what's going on with her audio, I wanted to make sure that we give you and Rakshana enough time to at least tell our audience a little bit more about what's going on, what's coming up, and a little bit more about you. Who wants to go first? Ooh, I hear something. I think that's Najami. Oh, no, that's not you. Yeah. <laughs> I got excited too. <laughs> <laughs> so who wants to go first? <laughs> I, I will go first. So I am Rakshana Trim. Uh, so I'm really, really excited. There's a couple things coming up here. I'm doing a retreat for women who are starting their businesses here in Portland, Oregon. It's on August 10th to August 12th. And that is this year. Super excited about that. And the retreat is just putting <coughs> stuff together for a business plan and masterminding with other women who are also getting into business or have been in business. So like great networking for other women as well. I do everybody who's coming in actually are coming out of state which is amazing so you have all these amazing women coming in so I have a couple more spots for that and then I'm working on a big project starting a school in Mozambique and Mozambique is in Africa and that is where I was born and I spent uh, 10 years in a refugee camp so I went back last year and I said how can I give back and I am taking in 2019, I'm taking a group of 24 people in two uh, sets. Well, for the first two weeks, one group is coming, and then one group leaves, then another group comes in. So it's going to be three days of volunteering by building a school, safari, kayaking, and leisure, and a great way to spend mm -hmm. some time in the in the in the village with uh, you know helping people do cultivating, uh, um, farming, and seeing what they do. So that's in May 2019. Wow, I'd love to be part of that. Yeah, I would love for you uh, to be a part of that. Yes, that I would love to do a bushwoman uh, a contingent if possible. Oh, yeah. that would be incredible! You'd be oh perfect God. for that because we are going to be in the bush <laughs> in the village. <laughs> We're be yeah, May yeah. 2009. But we definitely need to exchange numbers. Let me see how I can coordinate that because. Let's do we want to do the national bushwoman uh, sort of a uh, retreat or connect. It, well, my yeah. thing about giving back. Yeah, okay. Yes. Well, we can yes. share rooms because I'm going. Yes, she's going to <laughs> Not safari. Share rooms. Yeah, that's, an, <laughs> yeah, that's all about me. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Rukshana. Thank you so much. And Najami, what would you like to share? Well, um, I would like to share um, Bushwoman is on Instagram and Twitter at Bushwoman Convo. Um, um, my Facebook page is Bush Woman, and the word woman is spelled W O slash M A N, Conversations Project. I'm also on the Bush and Swelling Show, and my fabulous host here, Marcia Chambers, a sexual wellness from a, not only spiritual perspective, but from an informational perspective to help you to be more. Because if your root chakra is off balance, which is the first chakra, you tend to have a lot of diseases, this fibroids erectile dysfunction, low libido. So we are about helping the root chakra to stay healthy. Um, on April the 22nd, not the 29th, as I advertised before, the 22nd, I'm going to be at Mercado Museum. 
doing my workshop on how to write affirmations to attract your goals and your visions. Um, there's a particular way in how to write to attract what you need. So we're going to work on those and show people how to write. You're going to create your own affirmations and write it in a significant way. And let me just give a plug to Dr. Ye Wong, who's not able to come on. We are bringing Dr. Ye Wong to New York on June 8th and 9th. Check out on the 10th. And La Quinta Inn on Atlantic Avenue between Nostrand and Bedford Avenues. Mm -hmm. Tongue and pulse diagnosis. Your tongue and your pulse says a lot only about your health, your personality, and the imbalances in your five element shot um and five elements. And this is also with your chakras as well, all the interconnected. So she's coming to New York and you have to pay in advance for her sessions. It's at www.myafaholistic.com, M-A-F-A-H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C.com. 247 includes tongue pulse diagnosis and the herbs. So they're excited about um, Bush's Swelling Show sponsoring that. Again, Bush Woman is available for individual workshops and individual private sessions. And my gift, I'll say that quickly, free introductory session. And I will give my number out at the end. Or should I give it now? Give um, it now. 347 463 Three four seven four six three zero nine zero seven, and definitely look on my page for Bush Woman Conversations: How to Write Affirmations to Attract Your Goals and Visions. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Najami. Okay. Well, we are at the end of our show. And I want to say thank you all for participating. Thank you all for being here. And I just completed my workshop two days ago, and it was off the roof, champagne and chocolate conversations. And stay tuned for the next champagne and chocolate conversations. In May, it will be in Philly. And in June, it will be in Virginia. And in August, We'll be back here in New York. So stay tuned for that. And our next show on the Speaker MC show is April 16th. And it's Boys to Men. We are talking about the neutered men. Ladies and gentlemen, I love that you are can, here. Can I say something? Okay. I love that you are here. So at this point, our show is at the end, and I just want to say, according to Maya Angelou, I've learned that many people forget what you said, people forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And I hope that we have at least inspired you with some information and made you feel a little bit more warm and fuzzy to at least know that you are in control and not your food is in control. So until next time, here is our information. And remember, stay healthy, stay strong. Until next time, good night. <laughs>